So first, thanks for watching another one of my videos and sorry for the change in lighting and background. I'm all set up for a shoot I'm doing later today and I didn't feel like rolling up my backdrops and changing my lights around. So we're gonna use a white backdrop today. So I thought I made a video about this already, but I couldn't find it on my computer or YouTube. So I think it was just talked about in other videos. So what I'm going to talk about is crop frame versus full frame. I've had a couple people ask me about it recently, so I tried to send them the video I made, which apparently didn't exist. So I'm making it right now. Um, in photography right now, the two biggest formats are crop frame and full frame. You may hear some people talk about shooting medium format, so I'm just going to explain what all of that means. First, every single digital camera has an image sensor. And when you are talking about crop frame, full frame, medium format, any of that, what you are describing is the physical size of the image sensor. So a crop frame camera has a smaller image sensor than a full frame camera. I'm just going to show you some image sensors so you can get a good visual of what in the world I'm talking about. The first one is a tiny little point and shoot camera. So this little thing in the middle is the image sensor. It's smaller than my pinky fingernail. The next one is this. This is a Nikon One camera. Um, they're not super popular, but you can actually see the image sensor in there. It's a little bit bigger than the point and shoot camera, but it's still pretty small. The next camera is a crop frame camera. So this is a pretty popular digital camera. It's an SLR, which means it has a mirror. Um, it is what a lot of people start out photography with, and you can actually lock the mirror up to clean the image sensor. And when you compare them, you can see that the crop frame has a bigger image sensor than this camera. So the actual sensor that's capturing light is bigger. The next camera I'll show you is a full frame camera. And this is what most full-time professional photographers use. Um, and I'm gonna get to why in a second, but I want you to see the difference in the image sensor size. So I can go into lock mirror up for cleaning and the image sensor is right there. Um, and I will compare it with the crop frame. And you can see right here, the full frame has a bigger image sensor than the crop frame does. The last camera I want to show you is a medium format film camera. It does not have an image sensor because it's film, but you can still see how huge this thing is. So the back of this camera right here, that's where the film goes, and that is the equivalent of an image sensor. So this thing is massive compared to this, which is a full frame camera. So why in the world do you need a bigger sensor? So if you think about a digital camera and its image sensor and megapixels, so that's what describes the image sensor, so 24 megapixels has 24 million little points on that sensor that are recording light. It's recording the amount of light and the color of light. And that's simplified a lot, but it just helps us understand. So 24 megapixels, 24 million spots that are recording light. So if you think of each pixel like a bucket that's capturing water, it helps us to kind of visualize the whole thing. So if this image sensor has 24 million megapixels and this image sensor has 24 million megapixels, it's pretty easy to tell that this camera has bigger pixels or bigger buckets if you're talking about water. So this one with 24 million buckets and this one with 24 million buckets all capturing water, this one's gonna capture more because the buckets are bigger. So normally, the bigger the image sensor, the better the camera does in low light. And that's not always the case because the more megapixels you have, the smaller each bucket or pixel is. So if we're talking about equivalent megapixels, the bigger the image sensor, the more light it can collect and the better it can do in low light. And besides being better in low light, a camera with a bigger image sensor has more dynamic range. So think about it like this. 
A tiny little medicine cup, for example, can only hold this much water. So the difference between an almost empty and a full cup is only this much. Where if you have a giant bucket that's this big, the difference between an almost empty and a full bucket is a lot more. So if you translate that into cameras, the bigger the sensor, the more dynamic range it has, which means it can capture dark shadows and bright highlights all at once because it has a lot of variation between the lowest amount of light and the highest amount of light. So if you've ever taken a picture with your cell phone of yourself or somebody else and the sky is completely white, that's because the cell phone's image sensor is tiny. It doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. If it's capturing shadows, it can't capture the highlights or the bright parts as well. So the bigger the image sensor, the better it does in low light and the more dynamic range it has, which means it can capture shadow details and highlight details all at once. So that's what you need to know about the image sensor itself. And when it comes to lenses, I'm just gonna show you that as well. So lenses produce an image that's a circle and it's upside down, which is kind of cool because your camera flips it. But anyways, a lens produces an image circle. So when light passes through here, it produces a circle on the other side. So what I have here is, woohoo, it's a CD. So we're gonna pretend that this is the image that our lens is producing and it's a circle. So this, a Pokemon card, is gonna be our image sensor. So it's like this. So you can tell this is the image sensor, this is the image, and our camera is capturing just this little part of the image. So there's some wasted stuff around here, but that's just how it works because your image sensor is a square or rectangle and your image is actually a circle. So this is a full frame lens on a full frame camera. So we know that a crop frame camera has a smaller image sensor. So that is gonna be our Lego. So if we have a full frame lens, it's making a circle this big, and a crop frame camera, it's only capturing the center part of this image. So it's more zoomed in. So if you take a full frame lens and you put it on a crop frame camera, your camera is not capturing edge to edge. It's just capturing the center. So this fishing line is going to be the image that a crop frame lens produces. So you can see that the crop frame sensor and the crop frame lens, they fit together pretty well. It's capturing what it needs to capture. So let's say we have a crop frame lens like this, but we have a full frame sensor. So now you can see a problem. And what happens is this image circle isn't big enough to fill this frame. So you'll have black vignetting in the corners. So if you take a crop frame lens and you put it on a full frame camera, the image circle isn't big enough to fill the frame. So you will have black in the corners of your image. And I'm gonna actually show you this with a camera um, here in a second. So here we have a crop frame 18 to 55 lens on a full frame camera. And there's definitely vignetting on the edges and especially in the corners. But if I zoom this lens in, the image circle it produces gets larger and fills the frame. So if you really wanted, you could use this crop frame lens on this full frame camera, as long as you zoomed it in to about there. Um, but you can tell there's vignetting and it doesn't look great. To review, full frame lens, full frame camera, it fits. Full frame lens, crop frame camera, it'll work but your lens is going to seem like it's more zoomed in because you're only capturing the very center of that image circle. You're not getting out here. You're not getting the edges. Crop frame lens, full frame camera, don't do it because you're gonna get vignetting on the edges and on the corners because the image doesn't fill the sensor. So hopefully you can see a little bit better now using my awesome examples how a full frame camera and a crop frame camera work. 
So things to remember, a bigger image sensor means more dynamic range, so more detail in the shadows and in the highlights at once, and then better in low light. So some drawbacks of a bigger sensor means you need a bigger lens to create the image to fill that sensor. So your phone has a tiny little image sensor because it has a tiny little lens. It doesn't have room for a giant sensor or else you would need a giant lens and your phone would be this big. So those are some drawbacks is the bigger the sensor, the bigger the lens it needs. And also the more expensive it is, the bigger the sensor. If you've ever looked at a medium format digital camera, they're at least $10,000. And then you need a more expensive, bigger lens to go on that. So you don't always need a huge sensor to get good pictures. If you're shooting sports, a lot of sports and wildlife photographers will use a full frame lens and they'll shoot it on a crop body because they want to be as zoomed in as they can be. I'm going to take a 50 millimeter full frame lens and put it on three different camera bodies. All three camera bodies have different image sensor sizes. So you'll see as the image sensor gets smaller, your field of view gets smaller as well. So it gets more and more zoomed in the smaller your image sensor is, as long as you have the same lens on. So 50 millimeter lens on three different camera bodies. So full frame isn't always the answer. If you want a small camera to carry around in your purse or to take on vacation, you might be good with a crop frame or even one of these tiny little mirrorless cameras. So just look at your needs. If you're trying to capture a lot of dynamic range, so a super bright sky with a super dark foreground, then you might want more dynamic range, but a lot of the times it's not necessary. So I wanted you guys to see how a crop frame and full frame camera work and how their lenses work on them and what happens when you switch them up. And I also think it's cool to see a tiny little image sensor, boom, compared to this giant full frame camera. Don't always think you need a full frame camera. Research it, figure out what you're gonna be shooting mostly, um, and then make your decision from there. Thanks for watching my video and as always, if you have any questions or you want me to cover another topic, just send me a message. Make sure and follow us on Instagram and see behind the scenes things that we post while we're on shoots and sign up for our email list to get all of our free resources. We send out stuff about once a month, so nothing too crazy. Thanks again.